everyone, I'm Seema Kumar and welcome to Sundays with Seema, season 11. Each week on Sunday, I get the unique opportunity to talk to amazing South Asian women who are breaking new barriers and blazing new trails in arts, science, business, politics, and philanthropy. I learn something new every week as they share their life's journey and their professional paths to success. So join me each week and be prepared to be informed, inspired, and motivated. Welcome to Sundays with Seema. Our guest today is Soundari Mukherjee. She is the CEO of Soundbytes 11, an organizational consultancy working with leaders and teams to harness the power of storytelling to drive business outcomes in areas of change management, personal branding, cross-cultural intelligence, DNI initiatives, among many other things. After an exciting career with Lipton and ANZ Grindlays, the ability to be excited about the challenges and change provided Soundri the impetus to pursue entrepreneurial goals. Hi, Soundri, welcome to the show. Hi, Seema. I'm absolutely excited to be here today. Thanks for having me. Great. It's really nice to see you. What, like, let's start with some elements of our Indian culture. You grew up with that, right? That helped you succeed professionally later in life. Is that correct? No, absolutely. I think uh, I live in Hong Kong now, uh, but I grew up in a place which is Chennai. And of course, it's very popular uh, now, thanks to both uh, Indra Nui and Kamala Harris. Uh, a regular middle class household, uh, you know, where, but where the richness of life was measured by how hard you're working, what's your academic focus, and of course, leading a happy life. Uh, um, I mean, if I were to share about my parents, my dad was one of eight children. Yeah. And growing up, he realized that just being in a village where he was born wasn't going to really help his ambition. So one of the most dynamic persons I know, always curious, trying to learn new things, helping others with the knowledge. And my mom was the right balance, I would say. Uh, there's no love story there, but uh, she came from a rich cultural background, religious household, uh, but from a place where women didn't really step out to study. But her elder sister and her dad were very keen to change that for the family. And uh, so she went on to finish her school. But unfortunately, due to family circumstances, she started working very early, uh, yeah. again, traveling and all that. So I think this taught me to be very independent and brave and carve a path for myself. And while knowing that material things are important, um, it was important to maintain relationships. That's wonderful. Those are the kinds of values that, you know, are sustainable and last you, you know, a lifetime and more. Uh, you, of course, had a successful career in retail lending and banking and consumer packaged goods company. So what inspired you to leave all that and take the entrepreneurial route? Yeah, I think um, my sister and I keep talking about this as, as 50 year olds do. Uh, sometimes, you know, opportunities come from the most unexpected of places. So life has sort of been like a river. So gushing and flowing at some point of time, sometimes being within the guardrails, especially when I had my children and I was trying to navigate that balance. Sometimes it went underground, like when I took a break from work. Uh, and, but sometimes always finding a way to stay in motion. And that's what my career has been. And having that uh, ability to shape it, to be a portfolio carrier, uh, to do some of the things that I wanted to do, uh, which maybe a traditional corporate life didn't give, mm -hmm. but was not going to just stay put because that was not available. Uh, you know, to just take that and move forward. That was sort of uh, one of the motivations, you know, really seeking balance. Tell us a little bit about Soundbites 11 and what are the services that you offer? Yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, um, again, moving into entrepreneurship, uh, just gave a thought about what, what do people want? What are they looking for? And it was not an aha moment or a penny drop moment, but it was something that happened over a period of time. So when I was working with leaders in my consultancy practice, I realized that the most effective leaders share examples to make a point. Then when I'm working with clients, I'm also hearing that, oh, our leaders are not great in communicating change. They're not impactful. Uh, our sales teams are sounding like brochures. 
uh, or we are very great at doing a lot of bullet point presentations and that's what we sound like bullets <laughs> um, or we have our data analysts who are fantastic with their tech skills and data skills but there's no insights coming out of it so as a business leader that's what I'm looking for so really looking at working on your storytelling skills in a business context to look at these problem statements and purposefully and deliberately applying story techniques to drive outcomes. So that's the prime area of work that I do in. I teach at a few universities, again, in the same line, uh, so that the future leaders are equipped with these skills as they go forward. And it's a much easier process. And my third vertical is on mentoring, on coaching, finding ways to really help and pay it forward. No, wonderful. That's a wonderful way to kind of set up a business which has purpose and also business goals. And uh, storytelling, there is an African proverb that says that if you tell people facts, uh, they might learn something. But if you tell them a story, they will remember it forever. And so is storytelling as a as a technique is something that I also adore. And we all, as, as part of the Indian culture, we learn our values through by listening to stories like Ramayana and Mahabharata and many more. And so uh, it's a it's a great technique. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Sound Bites 11 and also talk a little bit about your own background when we come back. But for right now, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Sundays with Seema and our guest today is Soundari Mukherjee, who is a storytelling coach and the CEO of Soundbites 11. She's an organizational consultant, personal branding strategist, speaker, and mentor. Hi, Soundari. Lovely to be back and lovely to be in this conversation, Seema. Great. So your approach when you work with organizations, how do you take that to drive business outcomes when you, when you do that? Yeah, yeah. Part of the power of stories is that they don't just try to persuade people. It's actually yeah. an invitation to understand another perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the times it's an influencing skill uh, mm -hmm. more than anything else. Just listen to me yes. kind of a thing. And I think uh, when you share those examples, it inspires people to move into action. Um, I'm thinking about Sarah Blakely, who is the founder of Spanx. Mm -hmm. uh, shapewear brand most yep. people use them 50 countries in her yes. earlier days she was a door-to-door -door salesperson yep and she could have taken her rejection to heart like many other salespeople. but she decided to lighten up her sales approach with a well-placed joke or a humorous content and today when I work with a lot of sales leaders this is something that I always tell them about really uh, taking your content and yourself seriously, but not the rejection. Yep. So after many rejection, one day she was targeting a buyer at uh, Neiman Marcus and the buyer was just not even opening the door to her. So she just decided to put a high heel inside a shoe box and she wrote a handwritten note saying, just trying to get my foot at the door. Can I have a few minutes of your time? <laughs> Very funny. So Baya, Baya absolutely conceded and gave her, you know, 10 minutes of his time. But that started the upward sales trajectory for Spanx. Yeah. So sharing examples like that is also a great way to motivate people into action. Yeah. Uh, get them to think about innovative ways of approaching their brand and uh, looking at how do you do brand building in a time where attention deficiency is there. Yes, today you know people can um, yeah people. I mean, we talk about how do you grab people's attention? How do you convince them to retain and restate your information? So leaving a story there as a migrant to take it forward would be a good way to do it. Uh, speaking of retaining, uh, not just information, but you know retention in general at work. 
uh, especially for women in the workplace, what can be done to engage and retain them more? Because especially after the pandemic, women left in droves the workplace. So what, uh, what, what are some of the tactics that we can use to engage and retain women in the workplace? Absolutely. Um, I was listening to a conversation that uh, Arundhati Bhattacharya, who's currently the CEO of Salesforce India, mm -hmm. um, she was talking about it. And she said that one of the things that in general, and there's a generalization to make a point, uh, women are faced with is the 3M challenge. Yeah. Uh, marriage, maternity, and uh, mobility. Mm -hmm. And she said that the only way to deal with that is to look at one P, mm -hmm. which is partnership, mm -hmm. both partnerships at home yeah. and at work. Yes. A lot of the conversation today is happening about what we do at work. Uh, I was speaking with a friend of mine. We worked together on this space and we did this entire series on uh, engaging and retaining women in the workplace. And while we came up with a lot of things that organizations could be doing, what could women be doing, which is always feels like corrective action. So I don't want to go down that path alone. What could organizations be doing to support it? I think a lot of the conversation actually starts from before. What can happen at home? Yep. How is that support really coming up in a way that you're able to then bring that in into the workplace? Men are seeing that with women and it could be men, women, it could be other genders, uh, any other denominations. But having with your partner, having that conversation mm -hmm. really makes a difference. That gives you the courage to go out and do the conversation at workplace as well. You know, uh, there is also a role and another M that comes into play, and that is mentorship, right? And sponsorship. So how can one be a good mentor and a sponsor? You know, because I think we in the spirit of giving back, once you've reached, a, a, you know, a particular position, you want to give back and you want to uh, pass along that mentoring. So how can one be a good mentor and a sponsor? Yeah, no, great, great. I think, again, you know, the more we think about it, we all have to find ways to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember reading in um, one of Chip and Dan Heath's books mm -hmm. about this incident where this girl was an Indian woman who had just gone for engineering to uh, U.S. So very little time spent in the U.S., Mm -hmm. who was trying to find her voice in meetings. Mm -hmm. and her boss realized that, you know, if she stays quiet, she's not going to get noticed. And I know that she has a lot of potential. So he sent her off to the ground uh, to go there, find out, learn ground up so that she can come in with that confidence of knowing the content, mm -hmm. of knowing what she needs to say, instead of just leaving somebody at a head office. Yeah. So really helping them have that ear on the ground uh, the other side of it is to also look at how do you as uh, maybe you might be junior in the organization, you might just start out. How do you actually look at these opportunities? I think so. it's, it's a two way street. The mentors need to take that first step and uh, women need to feel just dig deep into that confidence of what's the worst that can happen. Yes, exactly. What's the worst that can happen? Um, you know, there, there are three qualities, I think, that South Asian women, especially young South Asian women, uh, should have. Um, and wh what do you think those are? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's very important to build your domain skills uh, right when you start your uh, career. Um, I would give a lot of uh, points to really putting in the time, mm -hmm. uh, serving your time uh, when you're very early in your career, because life's ebbs and flows are going to affect as they go along. So you're building in all the relationship credits at that point of time. Um, I would say really be great at building your brand. Um, networking sometimes is seen, especially for South Asian women, seen as oh my God, that's a bad word or like, you know, it's something that you do. It's artificial. It's not authentic. Uh, I think just have to get over yourself on that mm -hmm. and think about how am I serving the world by yeah. doing what I'm doing? Yeah. So really have that reframe in your mind and go ahead and do that. Yeah. And maybe I can ask you, what do you, what was the third thing in your mind? Or <laughs> the first, the second thing? 
Well, you know, I think the there is a real balance that one needs to have between confidence and humility. Um, confidence in yourself um, and your worth and your self-worth and your ability to make a difference in the world, but the humility to know that you don't have to be, nor are you, nor, nor is anybody else in this world, the expert on anything. So it's perfectly okay to say, I don't know, but I would love to learn and I'm willing to put a lot of effort into learning. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and more but for right now, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Sundays with Seema, and our guest today is Sandri Mukherjee, who helps leaders and teams use the organic power of storytelling in a business context to bring humanity to the workplace. She has extensive experience of working in Hong Kong, the Middle East, and India, and helps leadership in cultivating and maintaining mutually beneficial business solutions. Hi, Sandri. Welcome back. Great to be back, Seema. So, you know, the, there is a perennial question that we always have to respond to, no matter which gathering we go to. And you know, what do you do? What's the best way you think to answer this question? I mean, you said it for me there. In fact, I did a video just a few weeks back on saying that this is one of those questions which you dread when you go for weddings and functions. Yes. But by the time you're through with it, answering multiple aunties and uncles about what you do, you've got your mission totally sharpened out. Yeah. <laughs> because you've said it so often. Uh, yes. um, and, and you said it beautifully for me, actually. Uh, thanks for saying that. Uh, I do think it's my big, hairy, audacious goal of mm -hmm. helping leaders be more human at work. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you look at a purpose-driven, jargon-free communication when you're building a brand, when you're talking about your organization? So that's that's just what I do. But in a, another way, um, there was this uh, Tata Sons uh, past chairman, R. Gopalakrishnan. He called it wasting his time, oh. which, is, which is writing, advising, speaking, teaching, and exercising. Ah. <laughs> and uh, I, I do want to you know, do that as a catch for me, which yeah. is consulting, advising, teaching, coaching and helping which is nice. the mental part so i think that that's my catchphrase <laughs> that's wonderful so you know we are now living in the in a in an uh, era of big data and artificial intelligence and i think that uh, i personally am excited by it because i think that it's going to really transform the way we do things make us more intelligent and efficient what do you think? How do you think it's going to affect the workplace? I mean, we're already seeing in Hollywood with the strike, uh, you know, actors complaining about AI taking up their jobs, et cetera. What do you think in the workplace and about leadership? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm having this conversation with a work friend. Uh, we are doing this as a LinkedIn Live We've done a couple of segments. We are doing two more segments on LinkedIn. Uh, so it's sort of a really in the moment question for me as well. Um, one side of it is the uh, issue from the artist and the content and the ownership uh, part of it. Uh, but the other side is also about leadership and authenticity. A um, lot of the conversation currently is focused narrowly on generative uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> Whereas we have had artificial intelligence built into our routines for many, many decades. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is so inbuilt uh, that we probably didn't call it that. Yeah. But the current bus is more towards chat GPT and Google Bard and all, all those yeah. kind of things. I think what it really does is if you allow yourself to experiment, gives you the scale. Yep. Uh, I remember that when this company, Clarol, uh, when uh, Steve Sado was the CEO, and I think in the late 90s, he walked in one day and he said, we used to be so innovative. Whatever happened to us? Why have we lost our path? And he walks to one of the technical guys 
formulation guys guys who work in formulation and that guy just pulls his study draw open and says all the formulations are lined here nobody wants to experiment and nobody wants to try mm -hmm. today with ai you can do those experiments at scale really fail fast and all those startup jargon that can it's, it's really true it can happen and AI yeah, can generate that for you check it out and then you can go and bring on the human in the framework so yep. really looking at getting human in the loop and adding value looking at the higher bigger tasks so i see it as a great way not in the narrow definition of just looking at what generator way i will do will it or won't it kind of a thing but looking at in a broader way in medical um, you know sanofi has got uh, some ai apps that they use to check things and so i'm sure a lot of other medical organizations do that as well and this is something that's been going on for a long time so i'm very very hopeful <laughs> for the future yeah i think uh, i i am too i think that ai is going to be uh, actually used for good and i personally have seen throughout my life that every time a new technology comes along whether it's a laptop whether it's a computer whether it's you know electricity whatever it is people always think that we're going to lose jobs things are going to change but today we cannot live without laptops and computers uh, we cannot live without our iPhones or other type of smartphones AI will become like that is what I predict and I believe in AI as well and I believe that we can we as humans can choose to use AI for good how do you relax I mean what what, what are your hobbies and other interests where you kind of just let go and just enjoy and relax yeah. I love uh, tennis. Yes. So that's something that I started doing much later in life. But um, so it's like, you know, it's what Martina told. The ball doesn't know how old I am. <laughs> so <laughs> I just go and play because I love that sport. Um, the other thing that I love doing and it really centers me is my pottery. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ensure that I spend a lot of time recently went and did some Raku wood firing. And that was a totally whole new experience. So mm -hmm. really learning through that, learning to center myself, learning to develop other passions. So the wheel of life is not just centered around one thing, but having a lot of other things. But most of the times I'm chatting with friends. <laughs> I'm watching tennis videos on YouTube. So, you know, oh, what happened next kind of videos and tennis and anything else. Nadal, I'm a big Nadal fan. So I would watch reruns of his show, <laughs> his uh, games and things like that. Wonderful. Well, Soundri, thank you so much for spending time with us and for some great advice. I'm sure that our audience will be watching and learning a lot from this conversation. Thank you for joining. You've been watching a conversation with Soundri Mukherjee, who helps leaders and teams drive outcomes through story-powered conversations. Soundri has an insider's view on the challenges that organizations, teams, and individuals face, and this drives her passion while working on various consulting projects. With the current business trends, building one's personal brand is really important, and you have to do that besides just delivering the work that you're hired to do. She gives advice on qualities that you need to imbibe and how you can stand apart from the crowd. She also emphasizes the role storytelling plays in bringing the needed changes in people while they work on building their personal brand. We'll see you again on the next episode with another unique story. Thank you for watching Sundays with Seema.